Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. You know why it's so hard to get booked on Chef AJ Live? Because every time I have a guest, they're so fabulous, you guys want them back. And this, today's guest is no exception. Her name is Melissa Sherlock of Sherlock True Health, and she did such a fabulous deposition. No, she's not. Demonstration. I couldn't decide if I was going to say presentation or demonstration. So I made up my own new word that you guys wanted her back. And she is back today with more delicious vegan and oil-free fare. Today, she's going to be concentrating on Asian dishes. Please welcome Melissa back to the show. It's so nice to see you again. Hi, Chef AJ. Thanks for having me again. I'm so excited to be here. Of course, your kitchen looks beautiful, but it, it looks like you're you're ready for fall. Yes, it, and it's actually got cold here. We had a freeze. I lost all my annual flowers. So, And then it's going to warm up again at the weekend. So we're kind of in that up and down oh. fall weather. You know. Now, are, are you the only vegan in Omaha? Uh, no. You would be surprised. I did a whole Chuck Carroll podcast on this very topic because he's like, how on earth do you teach these food for life classes in Omaha, Nebraska? But I think you would be surprised. There's a big community here and there's a big community in Iowa, in Des Moines. Uh, you know, I think I told you that we had this big conference that focused on whole food plant-based nutrition in 2019. We had just under 1,200 people from 22 states, but most of them were around the area. You know, they could drive to the event and we had Dr. Esselstyn and Dr. Campbell. We had all these amazing speakers uh and we were able to fundraise to make it really reasonable for people to come but we have a lot of people here we have um you know an all vegan restaurant we don't have very many of those but we do have one and it's isa isa's uh, modern love that they also have in brooklyn new york omaha is a really great place to test out a restaurant because we are a, a very much a restaurant town and if you can make it here you can make it anywhere isn't that funny they started in omaha and then went to new york that is something that's amazing i'm so glad you have community where you are yes absolutely do i'm a co um co co not owner but uh, we have a we have a um a meetup group here it's kind of hasn't been very active since since COVID, but uh, we have that and we have groups that go out for dinner, a Forks Over Knives group that go out and eat together and come together. So it's it's not as it, it's it could be more robust, but it's not as bad as you would guess being in Omaha. That is fantastic. Who, how do you get the people to take your classes? Are they back in person yet? Because since COVID has been- I running. have not taught in person except for private classes. So I'm doing some private teaching now and they can, they can come to my home for that. So um, I also would teach at a store called Natural Grocers. They have a teaching kitchen. You know, the biggest thing is finding a venue where you can actually cook and and do things, but I started out by going to our community college and I pitched this non-credit class and uh, they asked me if I needed to cap the class. I did not say it was healthy cooking. I said it was whole food plant-based cooking. So no misrepresentation. I told them I would have to cap it at 20 people. Well, it filled up and there was a waiting list. And so that was probably five years ago. And I think they were surprised and I was surprised. And so after that, uh, I taught there many times. I got kind of a, a list of people interested in the topic. And then I just would speak anywhere I could. And uh, I've, I've spoken at the Omaha Health Expo, um, Health and Wellness Expo for the last five years. So, you know, I just get myself out there. A lot. That, that's fantastic. And community college, that is such a great idea for people yes. that are trying to get started because, you know, that that's, that's wonderful. It's really great. And they're pretty, you know, I thought I was going to have to pitch it. They're like, okay, let's do it. I didn't even have to sell the idea because they want a diverse array of classes for, you know, for non-credit people who want to take classes that are fun or just engaging. I love it. I love it. Well, I bet you can't wait to get back to in person one day. Yeah, 
I am going to be teaching a class though next week. We're trying to teach uh, in parts of, I'm also part of a nonprofit with a couple of other people and we are trying to get this message out to people who really need to hear it, who might not otherwise hear it. So we're teaching a class for like 80 people. I'm teaching it, 80 people. And um, that's going to be really fun. It's, it's mostly going to be an African-American community. And we're just teaching easy, healthy, what it really means to go whole food plant-based and why cutting the oil is important and all those kinds of things. So that's next week. So that is a big one. And that's in person. That is fantastic. Are you still doing Healthy for a Lifetime? Are you still doing the conferences either? Well, we had it this past, we had it this past fall in 2021, but it was much smaller. We had, I think, about 350 people in person and then another couple hundred online for a virtual event. Nice. Excellent. Yeah, those are fun. Yes. So today we're going to do Asian recipes. Yes. Which are so the delicious. reason I chose Asian is because, well, we have a son adopted from Korea. So one of my dishes is a bulgogi, which is a Korean dish and one that we really enjoyed before we went plant-based. So I'm doing that. It's based off a recipe by Shane and Simple, which I highly recommend that site. Really yummy stuff out there. And then I'm just kind of doing a couple of things I came up with uh, that make a nice flavorful Asian dish pretty easily. And they're kind of my no miss items. So um, I also studied and lived in Japan for a year and a half. So I have a real affinity for Asia and we, we love the food. If we go out, we, it's usually, you know, Indian or Thai or something Japanese. Yeah. They, a lot of times, though, the restaurants use a lot of oil and salt. Yeah, they do. You have to you have to be careful. Probably Japanese is the best for that. And you have to be careful in an Indian restaurant for sure. And, you know, it's true. We we don't eat out that often. So we do sort of know that when we do that, we're going to get a little oil. I know that sounds like we we're caving in. We are trying to teach. Uh, in the community about that, about cutting down on oil. All of my tribe, we always ask to cut the oil or reduce the oil as much as possible so that we're getting that message across. When we were working on the conference, it was very interesting working with the catering team. They can cook without animal products, but it's the oil that is, it's it's a whole new concept for them. So yeah, the we're oil, working yeah. on it. And they can't even cook without sugar, but oil and salt yeah. are so hard for them. It's true. Yeah. Butter. They can't hardly go without butter. But we did it. We, we did it for two years without any oil, and we served a beautiful plant-based lunch both times. That's fantastic. What did you serve at your conference? Oh, my gosh. Oh, Chef AJ. <sighs> you don't remember, but it was good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, I had a dinner, I hosted a dinner the night before the big conference, and had it catered by uh, friends of mine who have catering creations and had to talk to them about no oil. That meal was really good. I can't even really tell you the name of the dishes, but everybody loved it. It was good. It's always great to have people eat the yummy food. That's why in this class next week, we're going to have a bunch of food. And of course you can, the class is free. Anyone can come. And when you offer food, that's a really good incentive. And um, it's really nice when you can put out the message and have them taste how delicious the food is. So why do you think it's so hard for people in general and restaurants in particular to understand that oil is, it, it's not really a health food. And, you know, when they don't use it, they save, end up saving so much money. The restaurants that I've worked with that have stopped using oil. The biggest thing for me is just how clean my kitchen stays when you're not cooking any animal products or using oil. I don't know. I think it's just a learning thing and it's probably happening there a lot quicker. You know, things happen in California before they move in here to the Midwest. So it's, it's just, I don't know. It's how they learn. I think a lot of people think that some oils are healthier than others. They actually think some 
oils are healthy. And so it's a, it's a hard sell in my, in my part of the world. That's one of the biggest things I come up against. I think all restaurants, it's a hard sell. Right. Yeah. So the, the bulgogi, I never heard of bulgogi before. Bulgogi, yes. Oh, so bulgogi, that's why I've thing, never heard of it. Yeah. yeah. In Korean cooking, they have a spicy bulgogi, which is made with pork. And they have a beef bulgogi, which is the flavors are so good. They use sesame oil in that. Of course, we don't use that anymore. But it's like sesame oil and garlic and some gochujang sauce and, you know, um, lots of really wonderful flavors. And so those are those were two of our favorite dishes always. And so, you know, we wanted to make a vegan version and we have. So that's kind of fun. Well, I can't wait to see your interpretations. Okay. All right. Well, I just wanted to remind everybody the reason that I am doing what I do is because I lost both of my parents to sudden heart events. So um, I got started on Forks Over Knives and a Sanjay Gupta special on CNN about heart disease. And that was it. I kind of went overnight. And it's been about 11 years for me. And what I love the most is just really getting hands on with people in the kitchen because I work with people who have spent decades eating one way. And it's, um, it's not that this is difficult, it's simple in concept, but it's not so easy to put into practice for a lot of people. Some people jump in and learn really quickly and others need need a little bit more, you know, a, some slow guidance until they get the concepts. And what I love most is really seeing that light bulb go off when they realize that it's not so much taking away food, but what is opened up to them with this way of eating. So it, it, that's really rewarding. And I also just want to mention, you know, today, I'm kind of what prompted uh, the tofu dish I'm going to make is that it's you know breast cancer awareness month and i always say i want that to be changed to breast cancer prevention month because we're all aware of it we're all aware of it um, everyone knows someone who's dealt with breast cancer maybe even died from breast cancer so i really want more of a focus on prevention and i think some of the some of the numbers are up to 30% prevention uh, if you eat a whole food plant-based diet and there's no drug in the world that can do that. And I tell my students, if there was, it would be on the cover of every medical journal in the world. And tofu is all, also a very controversial topic here in the Midwest. You know, a lot of Midwesterners are not used to tofu. And even my husband and I, when we went plant-based, we're like, well, we're not crazy about tofu. We're not gonna eat tofu. We don't have to eat tofu. But now we do incorporate it. I know that some people watch it because it is, it's got some fat in it but tofu has also been shown in studies to to help you know lower the risk of breast cancer so i'm kind of pro tofu pro edamame pro tempeh uh, we do not eat it in every meal but um, i just want to say let's prevent breast cancer and do what we can what is in our control because as i tell my students you know, I know I'm not going to get heart disease or diabetes. I know I'm not going to become obese because of the way I eat. But cancer is a is a different story. Uh, no way of eating can give you 100% certainty of not getting cancer. But if we can lower our risk dramatically, then why wouldn't we do that? So that's kind of what I focus on with that message with cancer and uh, this way of eating and especially tofu for breast cancer. Nice. Okay, are you ready for me to start? Absolutely. Okay, I know last time, I don't know, maybe I talked too much. They're like, when are the recipes coming? <laughs> so no, the no. first thing I'm gonna make is this, just an Asian slaw. It's so easy and I start with a bag of this tri-colored slaw. This one happens to be from Trader Joe's, but you can get this anywhere. It has a little bit of carrot and a little bit of red cabbage in there. But I like my slaw really beautiful. So I've added some red cabbage. I always have some red cabbage cut in my fridge. It stays really nicely in uh, you know, a, a container, a Tupperware container or a glass lidded container 
already shredded. So I put it into everything because I used to think that red cabbage was just a pretty filler. And now I know that it is one of the most nutrient dense foods per dollar per pound that there is. So um, I, I try to add, add red cabbage to every salad I make. So I've added some carrot and red cabbage. I usually go ahead and buy the shredded carrot like you can get at Trader Joe's or any store. And then, so I put some of that in the bottom. So I'm just gonna add some, of, this is so easy to make. It's so pretty, I'm the gonna, purple too. What? The purple's so pretty. It's gonna be such a pretty dish when I get everything added in. So you can see how much more color I add with the purple and the orange than what the slaw had. So I put in always some edamame. That's what can make this um, a lunch because the beans always make it heartier. And then I put in some finely cut uh, broccoli. This could be cut a little finer, but I'm going to put that in. I always like to put red bell pepper in for color. Now you can use any color of red bell. And did you know that bell peppers have more vitamin C than an orange? And guess which, Chef AJ, do you know which color of pepper has the most vitamin C? Okay. Somebody asked me a bell pepper question this week. I'm going to guess it's absolutely not the green because I don't even care for those. I so I, I, I'm going to say the red because red is... Yeah. So I, I hope I'm not wrong on this. I remember reading it and it really stuck a while ago. I always buy red, but it's the yellow. Now, I don't know, someone could prove me wrong, but look at that red color and yellow would also be beautiful in here. So would orange. I'm gonna put a little bit of cilantro. You don't have to if you don't have it. And then I'm going to go ahead and mix my dressing on it. Look how colorful and beautiful that is. And then I'm gonna add some green onions. So I made a little peanut sauce. This is a no oil peanut sauce. It goes together really quickly. And I know this has peanut butter. You could probably play with this recipe and use, if you're concerned about the fat, use some of the peanut butter powder that is uh, less fat. But what I say is to add a little bit and really toss because you can easily get too much on here you just want to coat everything and this goes together you can maybe find an oil free one in the stores trader joe's has a really good asian peanut vinaigrette but it does have a little oil in it so this one's really nice you can see i'm getting it coated and then i will add some green onions because that goes with Asian dishes. And I'll usually put a little chopped peanuts on there. And I usually serve this in like a casserole dish because it really shows off the colors. And if you use one or two bags of this slaw, it makes a lot. This is one of my no miss items. I just had a couple of people in my neighborhood make it because I took it to the pool going away party. And then what I do is I really like black sesame seeds. I have a few little white ones mixed in here, but I really love the look of the black. So you can see, I went to zoom in on that, how beautiful it is. Yeah, it's gorgeous. And it is a no miss. The, the peanut dressing has a little bit of kick in it. Um, I'll put the recipe out there. It's got some ginger. It's got some, you can use date syrup or maple syrup. I used date syrup because according to Dr. Uh, Gregor, that's one of the healthy sweeteners and coconut aminos. So um, the coconut amin aminos versus soy sauce. I have this low sodium soy sauce. It's still 26% of your sodium for a day in like, I think a tablespoon. But if you use coconut aminos, this is like 7%. So 7% Versus, well, this is a smoked one, so it's not really the one you would use for this dish, but it's 7% of your sodium. So a big, big difference if you are trying to cut down on sodium. But I always, always buy the low sodium, but sometimes uh, it's really nice to use the tamari too, because that's a gluten-free option. 
So that is my slaw. And this goes at a party. If you take this to a potluck, it will disappear. Everybody will want to know how you made it. All right. And next we are going to, let's try for the bulgogi next. Because that'll take a little bit of time to cook. So I'm going to be over here. So um, Shane and Simple has this recipe for Korean beefless bulgogi. He adds a lot of, just go ahead and add bell pepper. You can see here I have all three colors of bell pepper. And I just think it goes really well with it. Um, and we always made our bulgogi with a lot of bell peppers. And it's just so, you're packing in the nutrients with these beautiful bell peppers. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get these onions going. Now, uh, Chef AJ, I don't know how long ago it was, I completed the Forks Over Knives culinary certificate. And I didn't take that for a long time because I cook all the time. I, you know, I know I learned something, but I didn't feel a big need to do it. Well, I did it and I learned a lot. And one of the things was really starting with a hot pan um, when you're going to saute these onions. And so I can do it now with just a little bit of water. I used to use broth or water to start out with. Now I just get the pan really hot and we'll see how my, how this heats up. And I'm going to go, I'm going to get these really hot till they start sticking a little bit. Uh, that's what builds flavor. Then when you put some little bit of water or broth in there, they kind of sizzle and they kind of caramelize a little bit. So, and we learned to do the, the water drop test, you know, so I have stainless steel pans and people ask me all the time, how do you get nonstick? It's really sometimes by starting out with a hot pan. Mm -hmm. it, it's sort of counterintuitive to me, but I think it, I don't know, it creates a barrier. Chef AJ, can you help with that? I, I never thought that starting with a really hot skillet would actually prevent, you know, sticking, but it does. That's how I learned too. And I love that little water test where the little ball just goes around in a circle. Right, and the first time I did that test, I mean, the little ball of water did not ball up for a long time. I mean, my pan had to get really hot. So uh, while those are getting started, I'll just tell you, I have the peppers, I have some rice made that I'm gonna serve it on. And basically it's just, oh, we need the, this is made with soy curls. So I wanna introduce soy curls. They are right here, I use Butler soy curls. We actually have a store in Omaha that sells them, natural grocers. We used to all order them online and then one day, I was teaching at Natural Grocers and giving a store tour and I turned the corner and here is this display of soy curls and cheaper than you could get them online. So I was so thrilled. Everybody went in there. I told my tribe and they sold out right away. And now they've been carrying them for, I don't know, a good three years or so. But what they are, I'll just show them through the package. They are just little freeze-dried, misshapen pieces of soy. That's all that's in them. And um, they are just a very good, I think a very good meat substitute. And some people, like I said, are afraid of soy, especially here. And so I'm constantly telling them that what the research actually says is that soy is cancer preventative. So I send out Dr. Graber's videos a lot on the soy topic. So anyway, that's soy curls. You can order them from Butler. There's some other brands. I know this is a non-GMO. It's not certified organic. I know I have an organic one that's like this that I have found, but these are really great. The thing we use them the most for is a barbecued sandwich. And I can win over almost any guy with that barbecue sandwich because I just you rehydrate them. This time, this time I used some veggie broth just to add extra flavor uh, to reconstitute them. But actually, I usually just do it with water. So I'm going to have my husband's filming 
have him come over and just point at the sink because after you soak them in water or broth for, uh, it probably only takes five or seven minutes. Then you kind of squeeze out some of the juice. Do you have a favorite uh, brand of broth that you like to use? Well, I will either get the package of them at Costco, which are low sodium, or I get the low sodium at Trader Joe's. Yeah. I just hate to talk about Trader Joe's so yeah. much. I love it. I love Trader Joe's. Not everybody, not everybody, not everybody has, has, has a Trader Joe's. Yeah. So everybody's asking for the recipes. And if you read the show notes, guys, please read the show notes. They're on YouTube. Yeah. If you're watching at Twitter or Facebook, we don't have show notes. That's why I recommend if you can watch on YouTube, it says they're coming as soon as possible. Melissa did get me all the recipes in advance. The problem is, is I'm limited to 5,000 characters, so I couldn't get them in. So she's going to take care of that very soon. So please be patient and come back. But I if you promise. I promise. Okay, I don't know if you heard that sizzle. My onions were getting really hot and starting to sizzle, tar starting to turn brown and stick just a tiny bit. And so when you pour a little bit of water in, then it deglazes the pan. I just really love really learning that because I didn't grow up learning that in cooking, how you deglaze, you know, a hot pan where something's sticking. So I'm going to continue. It's on high. Okay. I've got this on high. So I'm really kind of not really stir fried, but I'm really trying to get it cooked quickly. And um, then I just have this wonderful marinade. Now, sometimes I will rehydrate the soy curls and just marinate them in the marinade. This um, says to add it in the pan, which I'm going to do today. So you can see it. But sometimes I just go ahead and marinate it, put it in the fridge and for tonight or the next day. And those soy curls continue to soak up this delicious marinade that has all of these flavors. In it. So I'm gonna add my bell peppers. Like I said, the recipe does not call for the bell peppers, but I'm just a sucker for beautiful bell peppers and I think they make everything better. I do find in my classes that there are people who don't like bell pepper. What about you, Chef AJ? Oh, I have found the few people have told me that it was the green ones that give them a little bit of indigestion. And I was told because the green is unripe, but they don't have a problem with the red, yellow, or orange. Oh. And have you ever seen the striated ones in the stores where they're a combination of colors? They're like yellow and orange at the same time. They're just gorgeous. Yes, I've seen that. So that's interesting about the green. I just almost never buy the green. But some people, you know, there's just some picky people. Sorry, I think that's picky because I just think they're so wonderful. So I'm going to let that get a little bit hotter. The other thing I'm going to make today is what I call my shake and bake tofu. Um, when you talk about tofu in Omaha, people just, they just don't know how to use it, how to make it. And I didn't either. And really a lot of people fry it and we don't want to fry it. So I'm going to just show you how I make it in the air fryer. And you can also adapt that to the oven, but it could not be easier. And in the air fryer, it's done in, I don't know, about six or seven minutes. Okay, so I'm going to let those cook a few more minutes and I'm just going to show you how I will cut my tofu. So now I'm using an extra firm tofu that works really well for this. It won't crumble and get really broken down on the edges. So I have drained a little bit of the juice out from this. You can see it's a really sturdy, firm piece of tofu. And if Kevin can follow me over here, I literally take it with my hands and give it a little squeeze. But the thing is, there's hardly anything to squeeze out. Um, sometimes I will take a towel and just give a little squeeze. But this is really good for grilling or baking. It's just so firm. Okay. I'm going to try to do two things at once here. Okay, these are softening. Ooh, they look really pretty. I'm going to put my soy curls in there in a minute. So I'm just going to take this very firm, dense tofu. I think any brand that's extra firm will be good. 
And I'm not going to do all of it just because I don't want to take the time right now, but I just slice it into cubes like this. And you can cut it into slabs if you want, but I like it in cubes because we just add it to Buddha bowls. I'm going to use seasonings, which you'll see in the recipe. I don't even use a recipe. You'll see how I do it. But with this, you can literally make the seasonings anything you want. You can make Mexican flavored tofu or Greek flavored tofu based on what seasonings you use. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to my bulgogi. I'm gonna put in, here is the very meaty looking soy curls. I'm gonna put those in. Sometimes I snip them a little bit because some of the pieces are pretty long. So I'll just get my snippers in there. I'm gonna stir that in and I'm gonna put my marinade in. And really it's got a little bit of uh, tapioca starch, or you can use arrowroot starch, and it'll thicken up in here. I'm what kind of pan? What is, do you have the name of the pan that you're using? Someone is asking. Oh, yes. Everybody wants this pan when I teach. Um, it is a salad master. So as Food for Life instructors, we, we get a salad master set. And I absolutely love this pan. It's kind of like a wok, but it just gives you so much room to work. So now this is going to thicken up. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. And that sauce is going to thicken a little bit. I can smell the ginger. I use a lot of garlic. So let me tell you what's in this marinade by Shane and Simple. I've adapted it a little bit. It's got some date syrup. It's got the, um, I did use this smoked coconut, coconut aminos, which I thought would kind of be nice. I picked this up thinking that it was just coconut aminos, but for a savory dish like this, it's perfect. And then it has rice vinegar. I put a lot of garlic. It's got some gochujang sauce. This is a Korean ingredient I can't be without. You can get this at the Asian food store and it's, really just a chili paste. There's not oil in it, although it looks like it. It's very spicy, so you can just start out with a little bit, and the more you add, the spicier it is. You can see the Korean print on it, so if you go to your Asian food store, if you've got one, just go. It's so fabulous. They have every kind of noodle that you can think of. They've got these condiments. They've got a lot of things that are cheaper than you can get in the store. For instance, I always get a tray of garlic. Can you tell I like garlic? So I love it peeled already. And so um, usually I'll tuck a little napkin in this or I'll put it in a bowl that's lined with a napkin so that the cloves stay nice until I can use them all. I really like garlic. I always say, don't let a recipe tell you how much garlic to use, you measure that with your heart. So yeah. especially in Korean cooking, garlic is huge. It's a big, big ingredient in Korean cooking. Not so much in Japanese, but. That's right. Whenever I see a recipe, I at least always double the garlic. Hey, Melissa, remember when I asked you earlier what you served at your conference? Well, one of the live viewers named Laura said that on your website, Healthy for a Lifetime, it not only says what you serve, but it has it's all the recipes. recipes. That's right. Who, who is that on my, who's chiming in? Laura Beckman. Oh, Laura, thank you. Laura and her husband are my partners in the nonprofit. So the three of us put on this conference for 1,200 people. Thank wow. you, Laura. You know, I'm a little nervous. It's Chef AJ. So <laughs> sometimes I forget things. That was but so thank nice. You. They, can, they can go to healthyforalifetime.org and they can see, they can go to previous events and see, they can even, for the first uh, conference, they can see all of the presentations, including my cooking demonstration at the end, Dr. Esselstyn, Dr. Sarai Stancic, some great talks, and then they can get the recipes for what we served. Okay, here is my bulgogi. 
also, I wish there was a little more red bell pepper in there, but this is really yummy. People love this. I think in the Midwest, this really helps people kind of come around because it, it, it tastes meaty, you know? Okay. I did turn it off. My husband's making sure that I'm not running my... You mentioned the rice that you put in. What? You put rice in it. Yeah. Oh, yes. I put this on a bowl of rice, by the way. So you could serve this. We almost always serve it on brown organic rice. But you could serve this. Sometimes we will eat it in a salad. We'll just store it in the fridge and then warm it up just a little bit and put it in a salad. Um, you can eat it with noodles. You can serve it however you want. But the most typical way for us is to serve it on rice. So isn't that a beautiful dish? Everything you're making is gorgeous with the color. And yeah, so now I'm going to get this tofu in the, um, in the air fryer. So what I do, I'm not gonna measure. I, I will have these spices in the, in the recipe card, but you do not have, there's no way you can go wrong here. So typically I will put my tofu in there and maybe I will give it a little um, coconut aminos or a little soy sauce and kind of let it soak in. You don't want it wet. You don't want any in the bottom of the bowl. But this time, Chef AJ, I thought I would use one of these, either the teriyaki balsamic that I got from you from being on your guest, your guest from California balsamic or the sweet heat. Those would be like a, you know, salt free way, I think salt free way to kind of season this tofu. So I'm just going to squeeze it in and I need a spoon. And Laura is asking, what is the brand of the smoked coconut aminos? Yeah, that's a Trader Joe's. <laughs> Trader Joe's. I love Trader Joe's. I do too. I do too. I just feel like I'm a broken record all the time. I send a lot of people in there. So when I send them in for something that they've discontinued, oh, I'm just heartbroken. It's like, come on, I've got everybody using this product and now you're discontinuing it. Okay, so I just used a little bit of that. Um, for Chef AJ, because I know she's got me started on those California balsamics. And then uh, just in a bowl, this is what I do. I've got some measurements, but I'm usually always going to use some nutritional yeast. And I'm going to use maybe some onion powder and always, always garlic powder. And maybe a good... Um, I go through a lot of garlic powder. I have garlic every way. I have the garlic cloves. I have the minced garlic in the jar. I have the powder. And I'm gonna use this 21 Salute from Trader Joe's. It's just like a really nice um, Italian blend. They have a big one at Costco. It's a salt-free, uh, really nice general seasoning. I use it in almost everything. I either get it at Trader Joe's or Costco. And I might put a little smoked paprika in it, just a dash. I love smoked paprika is one of my favorite spices that I discovered. I'm going to put a little chili powder in. So you can see I'm just, I'm just winging it. So if you come up with a combination that you like, um, go ahead and write it down. But honestly, I think it's going to, if they're all seasonings that you enjoy. So then I just put it in there and I... I got a little too much of the balsamic and it's stickier than soy sauce. So I'm going to have to stir it, but usually you can just shake it around and it's like a shake and bake. And so I get it all coated. And then in my air fryer, I am going to use a rack. My air fryer has a rack. You could put it in the basket, but I really like to put this on a rack. It gets it from all, all sides. And I put this in and it's like, while you're making the next thing, it's done. I don't turn it. I don't do anything. I usually put it in there for about seven minutes and check it. So we're going to see how that goes. I've moved my air fryer over here to be close and I did preheat it a little bit. So I'm going to take the basket out and I'm going to put the rack in. 
So think about shake a bake, shake and bake, and you'll be able to make a tofu that you love. I'm gonna put it up, I'm just gonna go with the 280 that it is, and I'm gonna put it in for seven minutes. 380, 380. At 380, yeah. It, automatically defaults to 380, so we'll just try that. Sometimes I might go to 400. And then that'll get crispy on the outside and a little browned and yummy on the inside. And usually when I make a big block like this, I think, oh, great, I'm gonna have, yeah, you know, I'm gonna have baked tofu for another couple meals. Well, I start nibbling on it. <laughs> it's kind of like eating popcorn, it's a little dangerous. But then I will use that in a Buddha bowl. So just rice, I'll add the tofu, a green of whatever vegetables I have. You can just throw something together and the tofu bites are so easy to add. If I don't have the tofu bites, I might add edamame. I usually don't add both because they're both soy, no need. Or if I'm adding another bean, you know, I just kind of try to stick with one bean. So we'll see how that goes as we make the sushi rice bowl. So the sushi rice bowl, what bowl am I gonna make this in? I'll just make a single one. Do they still make shake and bake? Does anybody know? I don't know. And remember, remember hamburger helper? Oh yeah, I know people who still use that. Maybe we should make a tofu helper. Wouldn't that be great? Shembeje, I love that idea. Yep. Now, well, I gave you a good idea last time too. So no, I know. I'm on it. I'm on it. Yeah. I'm looking at you over here, but I gotta look here. Okay, now my sushi rice bowl. So we have had uh 16 or 17 exchange students over the year years. And since we have a son adopted from Korea, we have had four Korean exchange students. So I think it was our second one who taught us how to roll what Japanese call sushi, but Koreans call kimbap. And kim and bop means rice and the seaweed. And so we learned how to make it from her. And when we first talked about making it, she just kind of laughed like, why would you make this, you know, at home they can just go to any street corner and it's for sale, you know, so they almost never make it at home. But we now make, we roll it all the time, either sushi or kimbap. And we have parties where everybody kind of rolls their own and we have all the ingredients out and everybody can make their own. In, in fact, this past Christmas, we had my husband's whole side. There's about 25 of us and everybody rolled sushi or kimbap. And so it's really fun. All my students usually learn to roll it. And it's just a very fun thing and so proud when they come out with this roll that they can cut and see all the pretty colors in it. So getting all the stations set up, you know, it's, it's a bit of work and, you know, kind of make a mess. So one day I decided to, I have a bowl of rice, another bowl of rice, so right here. I decided to just do a deconstructed you know, sushi and just throw it in a bowl. So that's what I'm going to do today. Now, sushi rice that they make in a restaurant has a little bit of rice vinegar. This is one from the Asian food store, but you can get it at any grocery store. And just a dash. Usually I'll make up a bigger batch of sushi rice than this. Um, a little bit of rice vinegar and a little bit of sugar. So I bet you didn't know that that was in sushi rice. I'm gonna use a little bit of date sugar. Just yeah, a I did, little. I did know that there was sugar in sushi rice, absolutely. Yes. Rice vinegar and a little sugar. And so I just used a little bit. I've got my beautiful Chef AJ, I love the Lundberg organic brown rice from Costco, oh my gosh. It's, it's so good. And so then I'm just going to start putting the ingredients that I would put in a sushi roll. Now, mostly in my sushi rolls, my veggie sushi rolls, I always want avocado, carrot, and cucumber. Those are the basic ones for me. But since we're making it in a bowl, I can add like edamame. I really wouldn't roll that into a roll, but I can add it to this bowl. I can add some red bell pepper, which I normally probably wouldn't put in a bowl. And I'm 
I'm gonna put some avocado in here. And this is also, it, it's a lot of the same ingredients as the slaw. And I wanted to say about the slaw, the slaw you can do the very same thing with um, noodles. Just use noodles instead of the cabbage. Obviously I really like the cabbage because you're getting all that cruciferous goodness, but you can just do the same thing with uh, spaghetti noodles, whole wheat spaghetti noodles or made from edamame or whatever. And you have a really healthy, it can be served warm or cold as a noodle dish. Uh, I really like the slaw and make that most. So then this is gonna get a few green onions on top and it's gonna get some, I really like the black sesame seeds for color. And then a final touch is the roasted and seasoned seaweed. We usually get this in big sheets from the Asian market, but you can buy this kind of a tray almost anywhere in any store in their international aisle. This one, this one's from Trader Joe's, it's so close to me. Um, so they just have little pieces like this. And in Korea, we would just take a piece of this and put rice on it and eat it or a little piece of bulgogi and you just eat it with a single piece. But for this, I'm going to use my kitchen shears and usually I have this already cut that I just wanted to show you. I'm going to cut just a few pretties for the top. And people here are really hesitant about this too. It is a little bit salty, a little bit flavored, and it really makes the sushi bowl, I think, very authentic. So then on top of this, I would use a little wasabi mixed into a little soy sauce or coconut aminos and put over this sushi rice bowl. It is so good that the first time I made it, I had two huge bowls. It's so fresh, it's light, it's just so yummy and it's a lot easier than rolling. So that is my sushi rice bowl. That's another one that almost all my students, you know, from the very beginning make to this day. And now I'm going to see how my shake and bake is doing. Okay. I could probably let this go a little bit longer, but you can see I could brown that a little longer. And since I'm using the tray, there's no need to turn it. So it's just, you can forget about it for those seven minutes. And then I could add this to the sushi rice bowl. I could add it to, like I said, a Buddha bowl, some kind of Korean inspired bowl. You can change the seasonings up. You could use you know, uh, taco seasoning and add it to a taco salad. You can do so many things with tofu that if you just kind of get over your fear. So these are so good because they're crunchy. Everybody loves crunch. When I make this, nobody's afraid of it anymore. And they all go out and buy tofu. And that's kind of my goal because a lot of times people here will go buy it and they, they don't know what to do with it and they're kind of afraid of it. So this is a very, very easy way to make baked tofu. Now you can do the very same thing in your oven. I would just use a like parchment paper on a cookie sheet or something. And if I did that, I would probably turn it. But since or a convection oven would be good because it would get uh, the hot air all the way around. But doesn't that look good? I should put that in a bowl. And then I'm going to show you all of the things. How's our time, honey? No, that's fine. You have all the time you need. They look fantastic. Here's a question okay. from Stephanie. Yeah. If one eats sesame seeds, whether white or black, is that considered having oil in the diet? No. <clears throat> a good question. Sesame seeds are one of the highest sources of calcium. Um, you know, per ounce that you can have. I never hesitate to use them. Now, tahini is smashed sesame seeds and that it, it's oily, it's an oily seed. But when you have something that is in a whole food, it's encased with all these nutrients and fiber. So you don't have to worry about that. We can eat an avocado because it's so much different than the avocado oil. It is encased with all this fiber and these other compounds and nutrients. You know, we haven't even identified all of the compounds in food. 
Um, I think that's really fascinating. And they work together in such a synergistic way. I say you can never go wrong with a whole food. Now, some people might want to back off avocados if they're watching their weight. I, I kind of don't believe in that. I think avocado is such a healthy fat that it's okay. I don't use a lot of it. I know that if I put it out as something to add to something. Some people will scoop up practically the whole bowl and I don't do that. It's more of a garnish for me. So no, I believe in the sesame seeds. I would not count that as an oil. Would you, Chef AJ? No, not, not at all. But how, that said, if I were to buy tahini and there was a layer of oil on top, I would yes. pour that out the before I use The it. tahini is to me, yeah, it's... It's a little different. The structure has been changed a little bit from to be more oily. So I just want to show you all if I can show you without showing my messy. Show you all of these dishes. So the slaw is uh, just a really lots of crunch. You can put in whatever veggies that you like. And then the sushi rice bowl just starts with rice and I I add the wasabi spiked you know soy sauce or coconut aminos and the bulgogi is just really very very flavorful and delightful and then the tofu is just kind of an extra it can be added to any dish I could add it to the slaw if I didn't want to put edamame in there I might just add this or like I said, mostly we're just adding it to a bowl, adding a bean and a green and a couple veggies to a bowl and with some tofu. And that's- I love, where did you get, I love that bowl. Yeah, these bowls, they are different inside from the outside. I got those at Costco. I yes. think it was a- you, you know, Melissa, what I wanted to say, you mentioned avocado and I used to work at the True North Health Center where the dinner plates are larger than most of us would have at home. They're about 11 inches because Dr. Goldhammer wants to encourage people to, you know, take more salad and steamed vegetables. Right. They don't, they don't do a lot of high fat things there. Once in a while, they'll have avocado as a topping. And when people see it, they literally fill half their, I'm talking half an 11 inch dinner plate with guacamole. And he's like, that's not a serving. It's so true. It's so true. So I think as long as people just use it with, you know, some moderation, I mean, I like guac too, but especially when you're just dicing avocado to go in something, you, you just don't really need a lot to get the effect. It goes in a lot of salads that I make, um, a lot of Asian dishes that I make, a lot of Mexican dishes that I make. I might just cut half of an avocado and mash it up and put it on my potato spinach burrito, which I made last time on your show. I, I put avocado on that. So I just try to be reasonable, but yeah, you can overdo avocado. So everyone has to decide if they can have it in the house. I really want it in the house at all times. And I'm always nervous about doing a show like this because you've got to have the avocado <laughs> just right um, for the show. Uh, so I'm usually buying a couple of avocados every time I go to the store, you know, so I've got hard ones and almost ripe ones and ripe ones all the time. Any other questions? Yeah, on the question on the, I hope I pronounce this right, gochujang. How yes. high in sodium actually is it? Let's look. It probably has some sodium because Korean cooking does, has some sodium. So it's got 18% in of your daily value in how much is a serving? It gives you a little hot scale, how much to use for your, the, it, this says that the salt level has been decreased by 14%. So what it is made of is red chili powder. It's the Korean chili powder that I really like and fermented soybean powder, um, some yeast extract. I can't see what the serving size, one tablespoon. So that is, that is uh, that's some sodium. But I think for this whole, for a whole batch, which would probably make at least three meals for the two of us, uh, I think there was one tablespoon in it. So, you know, when you spread it out like that, we always try to watch how much sodium, like if we're having something that's higher sodium, 
earlier in the day, we really watch it for the rest of the day, things like that. So we're watching it a little closely, but there is, there is some for people who have to be really sensitive about uh, sodium, you might want to find a recipe because you can make gochujang and then you can try to cut down on the sodium yourself. Nice. Thank you. I don't think I've seen that in stores. Oh yeah. You'll find it. I don't, I'm trying to think if you can find it in regular stores now. I think I've seen it. I think Trader Joe's just started carrying it. Actually, it's really flavorful and yummy. I think Korean food is, is so good. I think um, Americans would really like Korean food if they try it. But yeah, uh, you can always get it in an Asian store. And like I said, Asian stores are so fascinating. Um, so fascinating and wonderful to shop in. Do you ever make bimbimbap? Bimbimbap? Bimbimbap. Bimbimbap. Bibimbap? Isn't it called bimbimbap? Okay. Well, I thought it was a bibimbap is, uh, I don't know exactly what you're referring to, but bibimbap is like when you go to a Korean restaurant and they come to your place with a sizzling hot pot. And so it's a rice dish that comes in a, it's like a, an earthenware pot where it's sizzling and they take off the lid and it's sizzling up and the rice kind of gets crispy on the bottom and so you use a spoon to kind of work that rice up into the dish that has a lot of veggies and meat or whatever's it, it, in it i looked it up That's, it's b-i-b-i-m-b-a-p -B 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 yes yeah, i don't yeah bibimbap -B is a little bit harder to make we go out for that one <laughs> I we know it. Really and it's served, it is served with the, the, the guchu jang chili pepper. Yes. Yep. Yes, it is. Now I would, I would say that always in a restaurant, if you're going to order bibimbap, it better come in the sizzling bowl. If it doesn't, it is not the same experience. So sometimes they'll just bring it to you on a plate and they've kind of prepared it in the back, but the place we go, the, you know, we've got off at air force space here. And so there's a, there's a, a big military population here and a lot of them have been to Korea. And so this Korean restaurant is sort of near the base. And so it, she gets lots of people in from the base and she is the sweetest little Korean gal. Anytime we go in with our Korean born son, she, she fusses over him and we had her cater his high school, you know, graduation party. But she, when she brings you the bibimbap, I mean, she will not take the lid off until you are paying attention and you are fully aware of the experience that's going to happen. And then she will, in a very grandiose way, she will remove the lid and it's sizzling, it's piping hot. And that rice on the bottom is getting a little crusty and yummy with all the flavors. One of nice. our favorite dishes for uh, to go to a, a Korean restaurant. But if I went to one, I would ask, does it come in the sizzling bowl? Interesting. Did your, did your family join you in plant-based eating? My husband sure did. Um, it was after four years. He, you know, I lost, I lost my dad. That's what caused me to go plant-based. He was here one day and gone the next. And um, so it was when my mother died four years later and her aorta burst. So another sudden heart event, that's when Kevin said, I'm going to join you. So uh, I was cooking this way. I had two kids at home. I was the only one eating this way, but my husband would eat whatever I made. He just had not committed to this lifestyle. But when my mother died, he said, okay, I'm with you. And from then on, we've you know, cooked in the kitchen together. Um, he works from home. So I'll take him a bowl and he'll, he'll always give me some love and say, oh my gosh, it looks like a restaurant meal. And so I very much delight in cooking for him, but we're in the kitchen together a lot. And he, he loves the food, thank goodness. And he's been plant-based, I would say then for seven years or so. Uh, the kids were a little tougher because they were kind of teenagers at the time. And it's, it's just so hard, Chef AJ. They are out. They, first of all, they don't want to listen to you. <laughs> They're out eating, you know, cheese pizza and mac and cheese all the time. 
Um, but my, my daughter is 23 now, and she's really trying to cut the meat and dairy. And my son is too. We, we know they've heard the message. They know how to talk the talk. And uh, so they've adjusted their lifestyle, probably haven't committed to it yet. I really wish for all of you out there with younger kids that I would have started, if I would have known about this and started when they were younger, because I have friends um, that actually, like my friend Jenny, she started her kids on this and they can cook this stuff. They, they know everything about it and they're totally into it from the very beginning. And that's kind of what I wish, but you can't go back and wish it happened sooner. You just have to grab onto this lifestyle and enjoy it. We absolutely love it. I, I think every day I, I, I can say that I love my food. So, you know, I know some people eat really simply like you and Esther. Um, I'm kind of a foodie and I tell people you can totally be a foodie with this, with this lifestyle, even no oil. You can be a foodie because the, the flavors and the, the diversity of food is so wonderful. So we're kind of still hoping on the kids, but my husband is fully on board with me and he will get questions sometimes when he's out with the guys or his brothers-in-law, you know, they'll say, hey, Melissa's not here, you know, have a burger. <laughs> and he'll say, I'm not having a burger. So now maybe that I've said this, maybe someone will tattle on him, but I don't think he does it. Do you? Huh. He's, he's pretty fully committed. That's interesting. You know, I, I eat simply because I'm lazy. If somebody made me nice food like you made, I'd, be, I'd love to eat it. You know, it I'm is not... true. The great thing is you can be as simple or as complicated as you want. I pretty much throw together meals and don't use a recipe most of the time. Um, sometimes I'm just, I all, always have rice in the fridge I all, or, or boiled potatoes or spaghetti or something that's really easy to get started on a meal. And sometimes I literally like pull out the rice and put some edamame and maybe some cauliflower in it. And that's it. I microwave it and eat it. I just, uh, it can be very, very simple. I don't eat as many sweet potatoes or yams as you do. And so that's kind of a goal for me. Uh, I eat a lot of potatoes, usually the Yukon and the gold ones. And I have read a lot about potatoes. I think they're all healthy. I don't shy away from any of them, but the yellow ones are pretty significantly healthier with more nutrients than the russets or the white potatoes. And then of course, yams or sweet potatoes kind of blow them out of the water. So sometimes I'll just stuff a sweet potato. I'll have a baked one in the fridge. I'll cut it open, put, put some black beans and some avocado and some salsa on it and call it good. There's a uh, there are really easy, easy ways to make meals. I've got a gal I'm working with now and she's just um, into it a little over a month and she was totally eating meat and dairy. She did, has never tried this. She wasn't tuned in. And the third time she came, she's like, I can't believe how easy it is. So some people feel that way, not everybody. Some people struggle a little bit because they're thinking of their plate looking a certain way and um, they struggle with it just to get over the hump. But this gal, uh, she just right away said, it's so easy. So it, it's a simple concept and you're right. You can be lazy. My favorite thing is to make a big pot of soup and have soup in the fridge. So I cook, but then I, I have a lot of leftovers. So usually like for my husband's lunch, I'll give him three options. You know, I've usually got three or four things that I could put together pretty quickly, ready to go. I also wanted to give one kitchen tip because last time I gave a lot of food storage tips and I think those were pretty popular. So when you're cooking maybe uh, a number of things like I was doing today, you know, you're pulling a lot of things out of the fridge and you're pulling things out of the pantry. So one of the things that I do is I try to get everything out. I practice the mise en place, the, the um, have everything in place that I learned in Forks Over Knives. Like the best thing you can do is prepare everything before you start cooking. 
But then as I use things, I put them on the counter closest to my fridge. I don't open and close the fridge. I kind of stack them up there. I put everything back over there so that I put everything in at once. Or if I need something out of the fridge, I'll open it and then I'll use that same movement to put things away. That's just, it seems like a little thing, but it's really helpful for me. I also love to use the trays when I'm making different dishes. I love to use these when I teach and I can put all the ingredients on a tray and it helps my mind, you know, categorize them and make sure that I have everything for that dish. It's even better than trying to section out my countertop. So I really like the tray trick and I really like just putting everything nearest to the fridge that's going to go in all at once. It makes sense. It's like a, it's like the Misan Plus, like you say, that's yes. a, a game changer. So yeah. people are asking, what is the brand of the chili paste? I'm guessing there's probably different yeah. brands. I mean, you can't even read it unless you can read Korean. But I will tell you, if you have a Trader Joe's, they will have it. If you go in, oh, this actually sing says it. Sing song, upper left. Yeah, Sing Song. <laughs> this brand is Sing Song. And it says go Chu Chang on it. So in these tubs, if you go to an Asian market, there are different things. There might be um, soybean paste or, I don't know, a garlic paste. And they're kind of all in tubs like this. And they're in different sizes. They are, there can be a big tub. This is about a medium one. There are smaller ones. It lasts forever in your fridge. You don't have to worry about using it up. Um, you can start with a smaller one if you like, but this is, you know, this is a lot because you don't use that much, but it will last, I don't know, it'll last a long time. It doesn't go bad. So um, just make sure it says go to Chang, or if you're in an Asian restaurant, then uh, not a restaurant, but a store, a grocery, ask them, can you help me know which one of these is go to Chang? But it says it right here, go to Jang, go to Jang, and nice. it's red chili paste. That's what it is. Nice. Any other questions? Yes, absolutely. Oh. There is another question. Actually, two other questions. One of the viewers says, "Do you have a book?" <laughs> no, I'm working on it since I was on Chef AJ last. I've had an idea to put a cookbook together and maybe cookbook and tips, because I really like to share tips. Um, and I, I, I've been thinking that in the back of my head, because everybody asks me, do you have a cookbook? Do you have a cookbook? And so I'm kind of working on it. Now, Chef AJ, I was on your show last in April. And that starts for Omaha, a really nice season to be outside. So in April, we're all really kind of stir crazy and wanting to be outside. And I'm outside every minute of the day that I can, that the weather is nice. I love to be inside. I hate to be trapped inside. So now we've had our first freeze, that temperature dropped. I lost my garden. So now is kind of the time that I turn inside and do those things, rest from the garden. This is why I like the four seasons. I rest from the garden and I do planning and I'm gonna work on uh, my cookbook. It'll have my story in it. It'll have my best tips. It'll have alternatives, you know, easy things, recipes because people need different things. And that's why I like to do the private classes because everybody's coming from a different place and you can really tune in to what they need, what their obstacles are, what they like and work with them individually. So um, I'll try to have options for everybody. I love coming up with, you know, recipes. Sometimes I'll go traveling, we'll go to a restaurant like that potato spinach burrito. That was from a trip we took to see our daughter in Oklahoma City. And then I started making those at home. I would have never put, you know, beans, potatoes and spinach together. And it's one of our favorite things. It's really popular with everybody we serve it to. So I like to do that. I like to kind of tweak recipes. Um, I've taken some of my mom's recipes and made them made them vegan so that we can still have 
I don't know why my voice is shaking, so that we can still have some of her things. For instance, I'm, I grow rhubarb. So, you know, there's a rhubarb crisp and you just veganize it. She made a rhubarb cake, which we make for special occasions. Um, I make a stew of hers where we just don't use the beef. It's called gone all day stew. And she would put it in the big speckled, you know, roasting pan in the oven and they would go run around all day and it would be done when they got home. So I just do it in the crock pot. And uh, I put a can of kidney beans in it maybe for meat or a lot of mushrooms. And so I try to take some of her things that are special to me. I feel that anyone can do this. Food has such emotions for us, a lot of nostalgia for us, but I promise you that you can take some of your favorite things that you had growing up and make them healthier, a lot healthier for you. Absolutely. Well, I enjoy doing that too. So one of the viewers are saying, how often do you prep food for meals or do you prepare it as you go along day by day? Yeah. Um, there are definitely days I don't do anything because we've got three or four things in the fridge, but like now we'll have some stuff made. Um, you know, I don't have a schedule. Like I don't do all my cooking on Sunday. I kind of don't do that. But what I do always prep are the starters. I have pasta and you know, there's the whole thing about, uh, what is it called resistance? Um, where you put the starchy food in the fridge. Um, so if you take pasta or rice or quinoa or any kind of a grain like that, potatoes even, and you cook them and then you refrigerate them. When you eat that food that's been cooked and cooled, it slows down the speed in which that food will turn to sugar in your bloodstream. So it's actually really good to have those uh, meal starters in the fridge. So I do that. I don't necessarily plan my meals because real life, I never follow it all the way, but I do get things prepped in my fridge. I've got rice in there. I've got potatoes. I almost always have some cooked potatoes, whether it's a baked sweet potato or just boiled potatoes. Um, I almost always have potatoes in there. And, you know, other things, like I said, pasta, I, I, I do do that because if I have that done or I have this tofu made, oh my gosh, I can put a meal together very, very quickly. So that's kind of my, I don't have a real schedule, but if a schedule works for you, do it. I work with a lot of people, they do their, their cooking on Sunday and then they have it for the week. And I think that's awesome. So pe people were remembering your last appearance and saying we came up with a, a book title for you, which was No Meat Sherlock. But I just thought of another one. I don't know if it's as good. How about Sherlock's Home? Like Sherlock's Home. Oh, my gosh. I think I like that even better. Sherlock's Home, like Sherlock Holmes. But this is like the yes. rest of Sherlock's Home. So I anyway, think I like that even better. Yeah, well, then go ahead. Go ahead. Start writing it today. You, Sir, okay, I'm writing it. I'm going to be asking you for some <laughs> when I run into when I actually get it together, know what I want in it. I might we well, might be back to you with a just, couple questions. Just start because you're very talented. Yeah. You're very articulate and your recipes are delicious. So you're so you're, Chef AJ, do you have a professional photographer come and and film um, your food. No, but I have one that does. The, oh my God. Hannah Kaminsky is the best. She has her own. I don't know if you've heard of her. She came to be as a, like a very young 18 year old vegan with a, a book that was incredible called my sweet vegan. And she, oh. she's incredible. And so you, and what's nice about her is because a lot of times people have to pay one person to style and make the food and one person to take the picture, but because she's already a talented vegan chef, you get a twofer basically. So it's okay. So amazing. you're not making the food. She's kind of taking oh, care heck, of that. Heck, heck I'm not. No, like, okay. like, uh, you know, like my first few books were self-published, so I could not afford photos. Not that right. I could afford them the second night. People don't realize like how much it costs to make right. a book. And they're like, you know, right. just give us everything for free, but I'm going to yeah. just show you like, look, look at her photos. Like, look at that. I mean, Oh, Oh, that's gorgeous. I, mean, I have a really good chocolate pie recipe. 
Yeah, I've got some really good recipes that I want to share in a cookbook that are my, you know, what I tell my people that I work with is I've already tried out so many things over 11 years. I'm giving you my best. I, I'm working with one gal right now. She says, I just don't know if I'm going to like it. So then I hesitate making it. It's like, look, I've kind of sorted through, you know, <laughs> recipes to find I, what I think is the best of the best. So and, and look, know, she, can do, she can do savory. Look at this. I mean, oh my gosh, that's so you, beautiful. Listen, we have the best viewers. Thank you. Anne is saying, if you make a dessert book, a baking book, you can call it Sherlock's Baker Street. I could, I could just call a chapter that in yeah, my Sherlock. Sure. You could do the whole thing. Here's what you do. Okay. See, I'm good at this stuff. I teach business classes. Those are my favorite things, uh, but I'm doing one on, on, on uh, Sunday, but maybe each chapter can be relate to Sherlock Holmes. Like, yes. So like, like, like one of the chapters involved elementary, my dear reader, or something that's all right. based. I mean, I, it could be really fascinating because it could I be like, it. like, it, could I like it a lot. Thank yeah. you to that viewer. Yeah. Yeah. I love, this is, I love my, my this is the kind of stuff that gets me yeah. excited. That's oh, really nice. Great. And it matters because there's a lot of cookbooks out there. I mean, I know people who know me would buy it. They've been asking me for one, but you know, if you're going to make one, you want to try to get it out there and it matters if you've got a little bit different take on it. Yep. So. If you can just differentiate yourself from the herd, you never know, yeah. but you're, yeah, you, I think, and I'll be happy to help you promote it when it comes out and we'll do another. Show. <laughs> Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. I'm going to be real busy this winter. I actually hope it's a really snowy winter in Omaha. Then you'll finally get your book written. Just do a little bit every day. That's the thing. It's really the, see, to me, it's just like with healthy eating. It's not like you have to be perfect and write 500 Absolutely. words a day, but just commit to doing something every day when you first wake up, even if it's, Absolutely. you know, and that's how you get things done. A it's little the bit steps. Of, yeah. It's the steps. I want to say one more thing because my motto is fruit with every meal. So I forgot to say that today, our lunch, after we get done, um, the pears are so beautiful right now. The apples are so beautiful here. I was just going to cut a pear and have some grapes. It's as simple as putting a handful of grapes with your lunch. Fruit with every meal will make sure that you are getting all of the, the wonderful phytonutrients of fruit. I say that a piece of fruit is the perfect container for phytonutrients and fiber. So that's kind of, I always stress fruit because Americans are not getting enough. It's one of the things we don't get enough of, which is really surprising to me because it's so good. So fruit with every meal that I would serve with anything um, that I make. I always try to have a salad and fruit um, with my, whatever my entree is. And when you add those things, it really makes a nice filling diverse meal that you're going to really enjoy. Agreed. All right. Well, this was a lot of fun seeing you again. Thank you, Chef AJ. I, I, I was so nervous, but you always put your guests at ease. Oh, yeah, I, you know that. I'm, I'm, I'm a pussycat, honestly. And next time you come on, we'll have a book to sell. Okay. I'll let you know when that is. <laughs> Well, let's book it now because maybe if you have a deadline, you'll actually do it. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. I want to thank everyone for, for tuning in today. It's really a passionate thing for me to share food. I love nothing more than sharing healthy food and showing people how easy and delicious it can be. Because if the food isn't delicious, I mean, you're just some you're people not are not going to go eat for it. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Jody said, Hi, nice to see you, Jody, by the way. It's been a while. Jody says, fabulous session. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Jody. And Chef AJ, I'm when I ever come out to the Sacramento area, I want in on a uh, potluck with you and Esther. Well, we have them once a month. And if, if we know when you're coming, we'll make it, yeah. just make one that it, it may not be an actual potluck, but we can make a meetup where right. even if we meet at one of the restaurants, so right. let us know and we'll book it. Yeah. Cause you've got a lot of great restaurants I see that you can go to. Well, yeah, maybe it, it's it, not a lot, but. No, it is a lot. And the thing is, is if you call them between 12, one, some of them say 24 hours and some say 12 hours in advance, they'll do SOS free. As long as you give them a okay. little bit of notice. Yes. And modern love will do that too. They'll make it oil free for sure. If you call yeah. ahead. Yeah. We have at least, there's at least four that I know of now and I never ate at restaurants before, but that's because they wouldn't make food my way. Wow. That's great. Hey, and you're loving your new home. 
I love it. Hey, come out in January. We're having a conference and Esther's one of the speakers. She's on a panel January 15th. And it'll be what so conference cool. is that? It's called the Live Your Best Life Conference. I'm we're doing our 20th conference, my husband and I, after taking a break since you know COVID. So we have Dr. Goldhammer speaking, Dr. Lyle, Dr. Wasan Alviera, Dr. Neil Nedley, and Esther's going to be on a panel with Al Schmidt, who reversed his heart disease in his 80s. Yeah. So uh, tickets are going to be on sale any second now. We're just actually Very just good. doing that. Would so you fly? into Sacramento? Oh yeah, you because it's in Sacramento. It's in it's, okay. it's actually in Sacramento. And we okay. did it Martin Luther King Jr. birthday weekend so that if you know people then they could go home the next day and wouldn't miss work for those yes, I think the only problem with that might be that I'm supposed to be doing a Thelma and Louise trip with my friend to go down to Florida. She and her husband get a place in Florida for a couple of months and I help her drive down with the dog. So I'll I'll have to check those dates. Well, that, yep. that'll be on your Facebook page, I'm sure. Uh, I, well, you know, the best way is on my mailing list. Usually that's where we send it out, but but uh, it would be on my website. So yeah, okay. I'll, I'll get on your mailing list. list. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Melissa. And thank you, thank you. Kevin, for helping. It was yes. a very wonderful he, session. He is so supportive, so supportive of me. He blocks out his time at work so that he can kind of run the camera so I don't have to, you know, so that you can see the food well. That's the main thing I want to be able to, people to see the food as I'm cooking. So Kevin, get her to start that book. <laughs> I'll do my best, Chef AJ. I'll do my best. Come okay, over here thank for you. one minute. I'm oh. just going to show you my handsome guy. Let me see. Hey, say something. That's it. That's us. <laughs> yeah. Wait, he, you know, because I couldn't see him because he wasn't talking when he was there the way Zoom was. Okay. You got to talk. Over here. You have to She's look the here. best talker of the two of us. <laughs> yeah, he is handsome. You, know he looks, you, you look really young, too. Oh, doesn't he? Thank you. Yeah. He's I call him Dick Clark. <laughs> yeah, you look really especially really before young. his hair went gray. He's like, oh, you're Dick Clark. How am I going to keep up with you? But um, he is very good and he can talk the talk. Chef AJ, I have caught him in conversations with people where he is like reciting my teaching about this. So he's really good. Yeah, no, he really is handsome. Maybe he'll come on sometime. <laughs> <laughs> I should just have him on this side of the camera. Why else. not? Why yeah. not? Nice. All right. Well, thank you. This was so much fun. Okay. Thank you very much. Goodbye, everybody. My pleasure. Take care. And thanks, all okay. of you, for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when we are checking in with Jonathan Fye. You may remember him. He's lost now over 230 pounds, and he's going to tell us how. Spoiler alert potatoes, which I'm going to eat right now for lunch. Take care, everyone. Thanks so much for watching.